ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I was silver! Away! Buck Norton, owner of the cafe in Richland, a man about 45 years old, was tough and powerfully built. He never spoke of his past, and to all appearances, kept within the law. But secretly, Buck bossed a gang of gunmen and planned crimes which they successfully carried out from time to time. It had been Buck's men who held up and robbed an express train just outside of Richland. We'll soon be at Richland, Bill. Just about a mile beyond that cut we're coming to. Yeah, I'll be glad of it, too. We'll have a two-day layover and we'll just... Hey, look in the cut. Logs pile on the tracks. Holy mackerel, must be a holdup. You don't stop, we'll be wrecked. I reckon I'll have to stop. Put on the brakes. I see him. Several masked men coming from the trees. Use your gun. Later in the back office at the cafe, Buck Norton fingered the packets of paper money on his desk as he spoke. <laughs> yep, that's a mighty nice haul. Twenty thousand dollars. That's just what I figured there'd be, remember? How'd you guess the train was carrying those bills, Buck? Hey, Buck must be a mind reader. I didn't guess about it. The other day when I went to the bank to get small bills for the gambling room, they couldn't give me what I wanted in tens and twenties. Well, what's that got to do with it? Uh, just this, Jake. The banker told me he was expecting 20,000 small bills on today's train. It was then that I decided to have you boys stop the train and grab it. <laughs> you sure do keep your ears open, Buck. That's right, Waco. It pays off plenty. It does. Yes, right. And I'll give you each your share of the cash right now. Quickly, Buck made five piles of the bills. Then, putting the largest pile in his desk drawer, he spoke again. Well, there you are, boys. 2,500 for each of you. Yeah. And you get 10000 is that it? That's your agreement with me, isn't it? You want to make anything up, Jake? No, I'll... no, Buck, forget it. I'm just thinking out loud. You better keep your thoughts to yourself after this. Now grab your cash and mosey out of here one by one. When I have something else lined up, I'll let you know. She knows. In Flintstone, a small town 20 miles away... A young Texas ranger dismounted before a small house on the edge of town. Oh, oh, there, oh, easy. 
Hi, Mom. Terry. <laughs> Surprised to see me? Yes, of course I am, son. My, you look handsome in that uniform. I completed my training at Austin, and I have my first assignment. Ooh, what is it, Terry? We've had complaints of robberies in the vicinity of Richland. Seems a gang is responsible. But, Terry, you, you can't capture a gang of outlaws alone. It's dangerous to try with it. They'd kill you. <laughs> I wouldn't try to capture them alone, Mom. I'll try to get a line on them, then call on the sheriff and his men for help. But Terry, couldn't they send someone else? That's dangerous. Mom, I'm a Texas Ranger now, remember? <laughs> Any assignment they might put me on would be dangerous to a certain extent. Ah, oh, don't worry. I'll be plenty careful. I do hope so. You... You're all I have, Terry. Uh, Mom, you never have told me much about Dad. Don't you think I'm old enough to know the facts now? I, I suppose so. Go ahead, then. I'm listening. There isn't much to tell, Terry. Your father left me stranded in Brownsville 20 years ago. What? When you were only one year old. Oh, yeah. I always thought he was dead. I... I told you that when you were a boy to turn aside your questions, Terry. I see. Go on. At that time, he was a strong, rough man of 25. He gambled away our savings and was always getting into trouble of one kind or another. He became a member of a rough gang, and when the gang tried to rob a bank and failed, your father disappeared. I never heard from him since. Was was his name the same as mine? No, Terry. His name was Buck. Buck Darby. Oh. I took back my family name of Harris for both you and me. Of course, Buck wouldn't use his real name anymore since he was hunted by the law. Then I'm really the son of a gambler and a crook, is that it? Your father may have changed or he may be dead. I don't know. But you mustn't think of it that way, Terry. You're my son, Terry Harris. And I'm proud of you. My father, also named Terry Harris, was a Texas Ranger before you, son. He made a fine record for himself before he died. I've heard a lot about Granddad. But, well, I, I thought he was Dad's father. No, dear. Now you know the truth. Remember your grandfather... And forget about, about Buck Darby. That's the only way. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon it is, Mom. But after the way he treated you... He always treated me kindly, Terry, in spite of his roughness. I suppose the fear of capture and imprisonment kept him from ever coming back. As far as I'm concerned, he's dead. Yes, I, I know how you feel, son. He's dead to both of us now. Well, I'll prepare supper, Terry. Then we'll talk some more. I'll be leaving right after supper, Mom. Oh. I have a job to do, and the sooner I get started, the better. After supper, Terry Harris left his mother's home and rode toward Richland, 20 miles away. The night was clear and bright, and Terry continued along the trail until a few miles from Richland as he followed the trail along a ridge. He was startled by hearing shots down in the valley. Oh, hold it, hold Terry sat a moment scanning the valley. Then he saw in the bright moonlight a night express stage which had stopped. He could make out several horsemen near it. Must be a stage holdup. That might be the gang I was sent to find. Get up, get up there. As Terry turned from the trail and headed down the slope, the stage in the valley started again. The stage is leaving. I'll go down there and pick up the trail of those outlaws. Get up! Get up there! The young Texas Ranger followed the trail of the four crooks, but lost it after a while near a stream. For an hour, he tried unsuccessfully to find the tracks again. Suddenly, as he rounded a bend, he saw a masked man on a white horse and an Indian on a paint coming toward him. A masked man and an Indian? Must be a couple of the crooks. Rakes, both of you, I have you covered. Pull to a stop. Hold, hold it, hold it. Oh, well, a Texas Ranger. Don't move, either of you. 
That mask says you're an outlaw, mister. You must have been with the men who held up the night stage a while ago. We're not outlaws, and this is the first we've heard about the night stage being robbed. Isn't that right? Keep your hands up, both of you. I'll take you to the sheriff in Richmond. Well, just a moment. I can explain. Sorry, you'll explain to the sheriff. I'm taking both of you in. The Lone Ranger stared at the ambitious young officer with a half smile on his lips. Tonto, watching the masked man closely, knew what was about to happen. The Lone Ranger signaled the great horse Silver with his knees, then spoke suddenly. Up, Silver! The white stallion leaped forward, rearing and shoving against Terry's horse. Terry, for the moment, had to give his attention to the control of his horse. And at that moment, the masked man reached out and brought his stiffened hand crashing down against Terry's wrist. This will do it. Go on. Oh, 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 oh. The blow had been aimed in such a way as to deaden the nerves in the young man's wrist, causing him to drop his gun to the ground, while the Lone Ranger and Tonto hurriedly rode away. A short time later, the two men stopped some distance away. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> a young Texas Ranger was surprised, Tonto. Uh, he must have been following the man who held up the stage. He may continue to follow the original tracks to find their hideout. That's right. We'll circle back and pick up his trail. Montel! Come up, scout! After the Lone Ranger and Tonto had left, Terry dismounted and picked up his gun. I made a fool of myself. Then remounting, he decided to continue to search for the original tracks left by the crooks at the stage. Get up there. Doggedly determined to find the gang's tracks again, Terry continued to search until he finally found them. Then he set out to follow them, not knowing that he too was being followed by the masked man and Indian. Dawn was breaking when Terry learned to his disappointment that the trail entered the main street of Richland. Oh, there, oh. Oh, the tracks I was following have been covered over. Well, might as well go to the hotel and get some rest. Later, I'll go talk to the sheriff. Get up there. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had noticed the tracks of the four horses Terry had been following. And when they realized the tracks entered the town, they made camp in the woods outside of Richland and rested a few hours. During the forenoon, the Lone Ranger carefully disguised his features. Then he and Tonto went to the cafe. They sat at a corner table having coffee when Terry Harris entered and approached the bar. Howdy, officer. If you want something, I'll take care of you until the barkeep gets here. All I want is information. Has the sheriff been in here this morning? He isn't at his office. No. The sheriff and his men rode out of town early this morning to hunt for some outlaws who held up the night stage. Then they're wasting their time. Well, how do you figure that? I actually saw that hold up from on the ridge. I trailed four crooks right here to town. You don't say. Are you figuring on picking them up by yourself? I'm sure those crooks are in town. But their tracks were covered after they entered the main street. Huh. Hey, maybe they rode right on through town. Did you think of that? Oh, that's worth considering. I'll go to the other end of town and look around for their tracks. Oh, see, I, I just thought uh, a sheriff's deputy that he leaves in charge usually goes to the hotel dining room for breakfast about this time. Uh, if you want to talk to him, you might find him there now. Well, thanks. I'll go over there right away. See you later. Yeah, sure. Hey, Kev. Yeah? Come watch the bar a minute. I have something to tell the boss. All, All right, right, let's go, Toto. I'm beginning to think we better keep close to that young Texas Ranger. Huh. Why you think we ought to follow the young fellow? I saw the way the man behind the bar watched him. Then he seemed in a hurry to tell his boss about the Texas Ranger. I wouldn't be surprised to find the young fellow's in danger of getting a bullet. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
vote to continue. The Lone Ranger's sharp eyes and keen perception had noticed the expressions on the face of the man behind the bar as he talked to Terry Harris. He mentioned something else to Tonto that had caused him to be suspicious. You heard that man tell the Texas Ranger he might find the deputy at the hotel dining room? Uh Uh-huh. He also said the deputy always ate breakfast about this time, 10 o'clock in the morning. That's right. I saw the deputy in the dining room when we had breakfast earlier, Tonto. And that man who was behind the bar was at the next table with three other men. They spoke to the deputy as they left. Oh, me remember now. For some reason, he wanted to delay the Texas Ranger from going to the other end of town, perhaps long enough to arrange an ambush. Why do you think that? From the man's attitude and the way he watched the young lawman. Of course, I may be wrong. Uh, what you do now? I'm going to talk to the young Texas Ranger. You wait with the horses. I'll join you there later. Uh, me wait. The Lone Ranger, in his disguise as a cowhand, met Terry Harris as the young Texas Ranger came from the hotel. Good morning, officer. Good morning. I was told the deputy sheriff might be in the hotel dining room. I but saw I... him there some time ago. He may have gone to find the sheriff in the posse if he isn't at the sheriff's office. Thanks, that's possible. I saw you in the cafe talking to the fellow who was behind the bar. I did talk to him. Why are you interested? Let's say as a citizen who wants to see those outlaws caught. Well, that's commendable. You look like a Texas Ranger I used to know. Of course, you're younger. Oh, that must have been my grandfather, Terry Harris. That's my name, too. I see. Yes, it was Terry Harris I knew. Now, uh, if you need help, someone to ride with you, Terry, Thanks, but I'll be able to handle things. Very well. If you'll excuse me, I must be on my way. Perhaps we'll meet again soon, Mr... Uh... Uh, Smith will do. Well, goodbye, Mr. Smith. Adios. A few moments later, the Lone Ranger joined Tonto between the buildings, where the Indian was waiting with Silver and Scout. You didn't have to wait long, Tonto. Mm, that's right. I spoke to the Texas Ranger. His name is Terry Harris. Kim Sabi. Yes? We know old fella in Texas Ranger by that name. Him die a year, two years ago. Yes, that was this fellow's grandfather. The old man told me about his grandson before he died. Seems the boy's real name is Terry Darby. He has his mother's name now. His father was Buck Darby, an outlaw. Uh, him know that? I don't know, but I want to see Terry make good as a Texas Ranger. We go now? Follow, young fella? Not yet. From here, we have a view of the grove behind the cafe where several horses are hitched. We'll wait and watch. Meantime, the man who had talked to Terry had entered Buck Norton's office. He told Buck about the Texas Ranger. I suggested he go to the other end of town and look for the tracks in case the crooks rode on through. Well, has he gone there? No, not yet. Sam, get Jake, Waco, and Kel. Ride your horses to the end of town right now and leave a clear trail to the rope bridge across Narrow Gorge. Yeah, then what? Right across. Then cut the ropes on that bridge. Cut them only partway through, just enough to hold. That is, until a man on horseback starts across. Holy smoke. When he got onto the bridge, it would break and throw him into the gorge. Uh-huh. An accident. And he wouldn't live to tell about it. The Lone Ranger and Tonto watched as the four crooks went to the grove behind the cafe and mounted. We follow him? No. We'll wait until we see Terry Harris ride toward the other end of the town, and we'll follow him. Five minutes later, Terry Harris rode past on his way to the other end of town. The Lone Ranger and Tonto mounted and rode some distance behind him. He's he's got easy, fella. Come on, As they rode from between the buildings, the Lone Ranger and Tonto didn't realize that Buck Norton had seen them. And suspicious that they might be following the Texas Ranger and the gunman, Buck hurried out to get his horse. Two hombres are fixing to interfere. They're going to surprise themselves. Easy there. Get up, back up. Get up. Come on. Buck didn't follow the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Instead, he turned off and took a shortcut and was waiting in ambush in time to see Terry ride by. Soon, the Lone Ranger and Tonto came around a bend. Buck, with gun in hand, back, rode out in front of them. Whoa, whoa, there. whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, stop where you are. Reach. Oh, 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 I figure you're following somebody. 
Maybe the Texas Ranger who went by a while ago, huh? Yes, we're following him because we believe he's in danger. If you're a friend of Terry Harris's, you'd better go along with us. Hey, hold on. He... Did you say Terry Harris? That's right. The Texas Ranger's name is Terry Harris. The Lone Ranger didn't know Buck, and he was puzzled for a moment as a strange expression crossed the man's face. Then Buck said... What? Was that fellow's grandfather a man by the same name? A Texas Ranger? That's right. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were both startled by Buck's next words. My, my boy! My own boy! Oh, wait a minute. Yes, Terry does resemble you. You must be Buck Darby. Yes, known in Richland as Buck Norton. I own the cafe there. The cafe? Those four men, they came from the cafe. I sent them out to, to get that Texas Ranger. I've sent them to kill my own son. Buck, we must stop them. Yes, yes, but it's too late to catch up with them. We'll take a shortcut to the other side of the rope bridge. They're going to fix it to fall. Show us the way and hurry. Get it back. Come on. One, two, three. Don't stop. Buck's gunmen had crossed the rope bridge, and after hiding their horses in the woods, they quickly cut the ropes of the bridge partway through, leaving just enough strands to hold it without additional weight. Then the four gunmen walked back among the trees. They could see the trail along the other side of the narrow gorge. And soon, Jake pointed, saying, Look. There he comes along the trail over there. Uh, in a few minutes, he'll reach the bridge and start across. Yeah, I'd sure hate to be him. Hey, Jake, somebody's coming up behind us on this side of the gorge. Kel, Waco, get your guns handy. Yeah, right, right. We'll step out and make him stop. Come on. <laughs> stop! Stop or we'll drill you! Who's over? Who's over? Oh, oh, got oh, over oh, hey, oh. it's the boss. Who are those armories with you, Buck? Forget them. We have to stop that Texas Ranger. Don't let him cross. He's getting close to the bridge now, and he's going to cross like you planned, Buck. Yeah, what are you trying to pull? Terry, Terry, don't cross. Stay back. Why, you... Hold it. Oh, hey, oh. Buck's gone loco. He's turned against us. Keep him back, fellas. The Texas Ranger's about to cross. Get out of my way, Jake. Oh, my leg. Got him. It's up to us, Waco. You I'll don't shoot. Oh. You. Drop that gun. Drop it. I'll drop you, you dirty coyote. Try it. Hearing the fighting, Buck sprang from his horse. He saw that Terry was urging his horse toward the rope bridge. Buck ran toward the weakened span. Once more, the Lone Ranger shouted, Terry, go back! Stay off the bridge! He saw Terry stop at the other end of the bridge. While the young Texas Ranger hesitated, the masked man suddenly realized what Buck Norton intended to do. He urged Silver forward. Come on, Silver! Buck, come back! Wait! But Buck ran unheeding onto the swaying bridge before the Lone Ranger could reach him. Oh, Silver, oh, easy, be close. Buck had gone several yards onto the bridge. Then the structure gave way with a resounding crash. The sheriff and his posse who were in the vicinity heard the shooting and soon appeared on the scene. Terry Harris found a rocky path down into the gorge from the other side. While some of the sheriff's men bandaged the wounded gunman, the Lone Ranger with Tonto and the sheriff also made their way down into the gorge. They met Terry beside the badly injured man, Buck. It might have been I who fell if this man hadn't run onto the bridge. Well, by golly, it's Buck Norton. Buck! Buck! He's very badly injured, Sheriff. Yeah, but I don't savvy why a smart man like Buck would run onto that bridge if he knew the crooks up there had cut the ropes. He had a reason, I'm sure. Buck. Buck, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, mister, I hear you. I, I couldn't let him go onto the bridge. Mister, you, you saved my life. I don't know why you did, but, well, I'll never forget you. Thanks. Thanks, Terry. He knows my name. He heard me call you by name. Oh, that must be it. He's a brave man. Yeah, but the crooks up there said he was their leader. He planned the whole thing. Leader of the outlaws. I don't know why he wanted to save me. Give me, my boy. Be a good lawman like... like your granddad. <laughs> easy, easy, Buck. Terry, you take my hand? Of course. Thanks. Thanks, Terry. I wish I could tell you that... Uh... He's gone. Yeah. Now I'll never know why he did this for me. Perhaps he once had a boy like you, Terry. At the last minute, he couldn't let you be killed. I, I'm glad I didn't get the chance to turn him in for his crimes. He atoned in part for what he's done in the past. We'll help you get him to town along with the other sheriff.
Later, after Buck's body had been taken to town and the crooks had been jailed, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were about to take their leave in the sheriff's office. Tonto and I'll be leaving now, Sheriff. I suppose Terry will wait here for the trial. You and the Indians sure did a lot, mister. Yes, they did. I'm grateful to both of you. And, of course, I'll always be grateful to Buck Norton. My my father's name was Buck. I see. I always hated that name. But now it'll mean something worthwhile to me. Well, I'm glad. Goodbye, Terry. Goodbye, Sheriff. Goodbye. Goodbye Mr. Someday we'll meet again, I hope. Let's go, Tonto. Uh-huh. I'm sure thankful for the way this turned out, Sheriff. But I'll always be puzzled by two things. Why Buck Norton did what he did, and why that tall man on the white stallion did so much for me. Well, Terry, maybe it's best that you just take what Buck did for you without trying to find out why. As for that tall fellow on the white stallion, well, he usually wears a mask, but he was in disguise when you saw him. He did what he could to help because he's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendell, produced by Trendell Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.